photographers, and welcome to another episode of the Portrait Prophet Show. I am so glad that you're here with me today, and uh, you're here to grow and become a, a better photographer, better, um, better for yourself, better for your clients, better for your family. You're here because you want to get better. And I am thrilled that you are, and I'm hoping that you're sharing this with others so that they can get better as well. The uh, Portrait Profit Show uh, is, is brought to you every single Monday at noon, with one exception. The second Monday of every single month, you'll find us at 6.30 in the evening with a panel of experienced photographers who are there to share something with you. But again, that's the second Monday of every single month. Every other Monday, including today, it's at noon. And so I'm glad that you're spending your lunch here with us. My name is Jim Landers. And my mission, well, it's simple. I help portrait photographers like you make a great income doing what they love. Each week, you get tips and systems on the business side of photography designed to help you gain a mastery over marketing and sales, reducing the struggles that most photographers face so you can finally get what you deserve. You're in the right place. Welcome to the Portrait Profit Show. The Portrait Profit Show is brought to you by Landers Photography School and Digital Pro Lab. And uh, here with us from Digital Pro Lab is Amanda. Hey, everybody. I hope everybody's doing well and got nice rest after a long weekend. I know uh, I was busy. I know Jim said you made it out to a, a photography exhibit, which is always amazing. I, I made myself available to go and see one as well. How was yours? Oh, man. It was fantastic. It was at the, Bris the Briscoe Western Art Museum. Uh, and uh, I, I suppose there were 30 or 40 people that were there in attendance for the artist to, to share his story. Uh, and um, what a story it was. Uh, there was a moderator there who was asking some questions. Um, but, uh, you know, he, he got into this. It was he photographed Faqueros of, of uh, North Mexico. And, uh, you know, that's that's a rough that's a really rough life. Uh, it's it's one that most of us couldn't even imagine. Uh, and this photographer was in the middle of it. He was part of it. They he, they treated him as as if he was one of them. That's how that's how well he integrated with this this group. Uh, his images were amazing. They were beautiful. Uh, just wild. They were a good size. Uh, I believe the largest was probably five feet that's wide. A good size. Yeah, but most of them were probably in the three four foot range. Wow. Mm -hmm. So maybe like four by four, a lot of them were four by fours. Wonderful. Yeah, my, at my exhibit, it, it was titled Glow. I didn't really know what to expect, but one of our, uh, one of our employees actually was showcasing her work there, and she had printed oh. her images through Digital ProLab on metal, on silver metal, so it wasn't your traditional white uh, where you have really good contrast there. It, it really was contingent on light, uh, with the title being Glow of the exhibit. She had partnered and collaborated with a, a local neon artist and actually applied neon to it. So it was a very unique uh, way to see a, one of our print products kind of elevated to the next level of what it could be just to, to really have a good impactful image um, wow. presented. So I, I really love going to gallery exhibits. It kind of gets mm -hmm. the creative juices flowing. You see how people actually um, present their work and, and obviously time and effort go into to producing and printing and, and coming up with those amazing ideas. So I'm glad to see our community in, in several different avenues uh, pushing the envelope in printing. So it's great. It is fantastic to see that. Of course, you know, I, for some of the for some watching that, that was preaching to the choir to, to know that that printing is a good thing for others, they just haven't experienced it yet. But once they do, they'll start feeling the same way you do. And uh, it's it's a totally it's a different relationship with the work that you've created. Absolutely. Very different relationship. And it's something to continue to develop and gain knowledge in. And it just makes you a better shooter. I've, I've never once spoken to any photographer that is printing that has told me that they didn't become a better shooter and photographer and artist mm. after printing their work. Never have I once had that conversation. That makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, totally believe that. 
Is there anybody on here that is 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 uh, uh, getting started with printing? Hasn't started yet? You can post something in the in the comments. Uh, you know, there's there are concerns that when you start something new, there's there's always a little bit of uh, at least concern, but it, it's you know, curiosity. It's it's feeling like you're not in the in, in the the um, where you're your best because well you haven't experienced it yet. And uh, so, you know, if you have, if you've got those thoughts and comments, go ahead and, and write them down. Um, I want to, we encourage you to like or love what it is that we're doing. Click that like button, click that love button. We also encourage you to comment. We really want to see what you're thinking or ask questions. Either way, um, if, if the, you know, the questions are, or are for this show, we may even include them in, in during the episode. But um, we, we definitely encourage that interaction of likes, and loves, comments, and questions. Uh, and I can see a, a handful of you have already done so. Let's see. Hello, Miguel. I'm glad you are here today. And it looks like uh, Lewis is here as well. How's it going, Lewis? <laughs> Quick answer. He's doing good. <laughs> and uh, Rick says, "Howdy, how are you doing, Rick? Glad you're here." Amado, it's uh, we are doing. I'm doing great, and you you, you can see that uh, that Amanda's doing great too. Perfect. Especially, especially. Well, doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> and, and let's see, Steve. Hey, back from Egypt. Glad you're here. Uh, let's see, Miguel. <laughs> Good. You know that he's responding to uh, when we talked about uh, seeing the photographs. I think of a glossy eight by ten every time I click the trigger. That's you know it's uh, thinking of something as an end result is a smart thing to do. Uh, and for for me, it's I, I already know where the photograph is going to be displayed on the wall, and so I'm creating for that space. And so uh, let's say it's a, a wide space, then I, I'm ignoring the top and bottom of, of the photograph because I know I'm going to crop it. Uh, so I'm just, I, I already know ahead of time what, what space it's going to go into and I'm creating for that. But let's say that I have, I, I don't. Uh, I'm just creating for myself. I'm walking downtown, going, going to see something. Uh, I, I will a lot of times ignore the, the sides of my photograph, if it's a horizontal or top and bottom and it's vertical, because of what he what miguel is talking about here in eight by ten if i photo if i photograph full frame and i need that full frame i can't do an eight by ten i'll have to do an eight by twelve not that that's a problem but it's a consideration and so i do think about things like that do you have any thoughts on those kind of things amanda um yeah uh, definitely the you know aiming to to print you know especially from the inception of the image which is you know you taking the photograph having that foresight to know what it's going to become um obviously you know jim you could speak to this but hopefully there's something there's been some pre-consultation done at the beginning so you kind of have a vision or idea of what you're shooting for where the placement is going to go in the home um so that pre-conversation that you have uh will will hopefully um guide you in the end to, to how you need to shoot. And, and Miguel brings up a good point. You know, uh, he think, thinks of an eight by 10 every time he's gonna shoot. That eight by 10 will kind of constrain um, your area of how you're gonna shoot. Uh, That's so a that good thing. hopefully you you have enough to be able to crop and, and do things later on, especially if you're not having that conversation ahead of time, you wanna give yourself enough room. Um, Cause yeah, at the lab or through the ordering process, you don't, you don't wanna, think that you're going to be able to do a certain size and then you can't because you chopped the head off and you got to go back and have the conversation with the client again that sorry i can't give you that size we got to do this or now you have to have it with a border um so having a little foresight is always good that's true rick i i, I think you're right I, I want to be i i think appropriately sized is right but that almost always is bigger is better. <laughs> and yeah, so, um, man, I think a lot of us have preconceived ideas on what bigger is or what a big print is. And here, this is a story, I'm going to relay a story that I, I've relayed many times over the years um, because it struck me as, as an odd thing. And to photographers, this may not seem odd, but to some of your clients, this seems like the norm. Um, this um, dad called 
about a family portrait. First of all, that's that's unusual because it's always, always almost always mom calling. But dad called and he said, I want to do a family portrait. We have never done a family portrait and I want the big one. That's what he said. <laughs> I'm like, what does that mean to you? <laughs> no, I did this go into the conversation a little bit more before I came back to that. Um, but I did ask him, what does the big one mean to you? And he said, oh, I want the biggest one. I want the eight by 10. And he wasn't kidding. He, he believed that the largest photography print you could get, not art print, he believed you could get that larger. I'm not sure how, how he how that worked out in his mind, but he believed 8x10 was the largest photographic print you could get. And so I started thinking, what would cause a person to have this preconceived idea? Do you know what it is, Amanda? School pictures. Ah, yeah, there you go. School pictures. A lot of times, not all, but a lot of times the 8x10 is the largest print you can get with school pictures. And so if that is someone's only experience with a professional photographer, they may have a preconceived idea that an 8x10 is big, <laughs> which to us is kind of funny um, because an 8x10 is not even really a wall portrait. It's 11 by 14 is probably the borderline, and I would question that. I think 16 by 20 is where wall portraits begin. I think that's the small size, that's and it's a size he hadn't considered. So <laughs> I did walk into a a bachelor's home one time and he did have an eight by 10 above his couch. Just one? One. Okay. And he was proud of it. A minimalist. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think he had the same pre, the same preconceived idea. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We get that a lot in the lab too. When they're like, I, I need to print something. And you're like, okay, well, how big do we want to go? As big as you can get it, as big as you offer. And I'm like, okay. And I point to like a 40 by 60 or a 60 by 90. And I don't want that big. Okay. Well, show me with your hands how big. Uh, this big. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. I, I'm going to, it was talking about how he remembers the first 40 by 60 canvas he ever made for a client. His jaw dropped. Mm hmm. That's what happens. You are going to be so impressed with yourself. If you like that kind of thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, Lewis definitely wants to. Good. Good. I'm glad. And your work is, is good, uh, Lewis. You, you definitely have uh, work that should be printed and should be enjoyed on someone's wall. Uh, you, you are definitely uh, uh, there and heading in that direction. I'm glad to hear it. Yeah, Lewis, good guy. Let's see who else. Uh, oh, old school Miguel printing your own images in a dark room, like in your in your home bathroom or something. I've never done it at home, uh, but that's how I started off learning how to do it. I, when I went to college, they they made you do it in the dark room. Uh, there was no uh, you you didn't get to send it to some lab to have it done for you. You you did it yourself. Um, I don't know that that's a benefit. Maybe to some degree, uh, Digital Pro Lab does such a good job. You really don't need to know that stuff. And you're going to waste a lot of time trying to get it right. And man, there, there's too many variables. Yeah, there's uh, a lot to focus on in a business. I mean, that's what we're talking about, building your photography business. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, we do work with some photographers that have some of their own printers and things like that. But, you know, I, I most people don't want to get into the printing side of things it, it's it's a lot and it takes you away from being a better artist photographer business person really focusing on your numbers um so you know i would say come come talk to us let us help you with that part of it so so you don't have to worry mm -hmm. about it too much oh yeah it's a lot <laughs> i know it, it is, is. Yeah. it's a lot yeah uh, to for my students i always recommend uh, if you say that you are trying to do the best for your clients and I say if because maybe that's not what you say. But if you say, I am doing whatever is possible to make this experience, to make this product the best that it could possibly be for my clients, because I love my clients. Well, I guarantee that you are never going to be as good a printer as someone who does it as their career. Just not going to happen. The, these the, Amanda's team does this day in and day out. They live this. They love this. They've been doing it for years. Some of them 20 years, 30 years. This is their career. They love this stuff. 
you're not going to be as good as them. Not at printing. Other things, yeah. But printing's their thing. And so if you recommend, if you tell excuse me, if you tell your clients, I am doing the best for you at every step of the process, then you're you're gonna do your printing with Digital Pro Lab. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. What other comments did I I, I skipped a couple. Um uh, which one did I skip? I think you've got them all. Yep, there's that's a good one. I agree with that. Can't beat the feeling of seeing your work printed to an appropriate size. Yep, totally agree. So many people feel an eight by ten is big. That's a true statement. Of course, it's up to us as uh, as professionals to to do client education. Uh, I, I keep hearing uh, photographers say, "Well, that's not what the client asked for." I get it, but you're the pro. Um, let them know what is the best possible option based on what it is that they want. You know more than they do. That's not the other way around. You're the professional. They don't do this day in, day out. You do this day in, day out. So <laughs> leave the printing to the pros. I'll stick to shooting the photo. Yeah, exactly. That's what we love. That's what we're good at. Let's do more of it. Hmm. Good stuff, you guys. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see all that, all the interaction. Uh, by the way, if and only if you don't choose to remain anonymous, then I, I want you to, uh, before leaving a comment, grant StreamYard, that's, our, that's the, the uh, platform that we use to live stream this, this show, give StreamYard permission to see your name. And that the link is, is right here, um, but it's also at the, at the beginning of the post. So go up to the, to go past all the, the new um, posts that have been there. The original post will have this link in it. Uh, if you want to remain anonymous, then don't do this because it will tell us who you are. But I want to know who you are. Amanda, I bet you want to know who they are too. Who's making announcements. Uh, so so uh, do that again if you want to remain anonymous. Man, we are here to talk about getting the studio of your dreams. And that can mean a lot of things. Um, Amanda, before being uh, doing... Uh, what you do full time, you did photography. Mm -hmm. Did you ever have a dream of, of having a studio or did you want to work from home? Uh, and some people do, some people don't. And either way is fine. Yeah, I, I considered having a studio at one point. Um, we actually had an in-home studio for some smaller shoots um, for, for a time. And, um, you know, before we decided that we wanted to continue on the printing side of it. Um, but but yeah, we worked with a lot of photographers too that, that have this aspiration of having their own studio um, and whether we're partnering with them with local studio spaces that they can rent or um, creating studio spaces in their own homes or whatever springboard and method they need to get to where they want to go. Um, that's, you know, we do a lot of that recommendation too. And, and we see a lot of people eventually get their own studios and it's, it's really great to see. It's scary, scary for them. Um, but once they make that leap, they, they don't normally regret it. They, they're excited. Some space they can call their own and, and bring people and invite them to. So it's great. Yeah. 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 They can be the best thing that's ever happened, but it's it isn't the right thing for everyone. Yeah. Uh, and and we um, I think we all it at least crosses our mind uh, to to have a, a a studio outside of our our home. Uh, and what that means to each individual is a totally different thing. Uh, and it's fun to just brainstorm about it, just think about it, just let your mind flow with that information. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. And so um, Amanda will be bringing, or excuse me, we'll be bringing Amanda back on at the end. She has some things that she wants to share. She also has a promo code for you guys uh, and um, a, a cool product that she wants to share with you. And so Amanda, we'll see you in just a little while. All right. Perfect. Jim. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Oh man, get the studio of your dreams. Yeah. Is that a pie in the sky idea? Or is it a reality? If it's a reality for anyone, it's a reality. 
if there are people who have amazing studios, who have amazing offices, then it's not a pipe dream. It's a reality for them. And they're no different than you. Something caused them to be able to have that studio of their dreams. Something that you look at and think, oh my gosh, that's beautiful. That is amazing. You can have the studio of your dreams. Last week, I asked two different photographers a question. And both of them answered that question pretty much in the same exact way. Here's that question. How do you feel about where you are in your career? Gave them a moment to think about it, just like I'm giving you now. Both responded similarly. They said, I feel behind. I feel behind. I feel like I should be further along than I am. I know that I've come a long way. I'm a better photographer. I'm better at the business side. But I still feel like I'm behind on things. You know what? I believe that we all feel that way. Not all the time. But at times, I think we all do. We feel behind. But how do we even know? Have you defined what it is that you want? If so, have you defined the path to get there? I mean, if you're driving, aren't you going to do that? This is much more important than driving to get an errand solved. So have you defined what you want? If so, have you defined how to get there? The path. And if you have defined the path, have you defined a timeline for making it happen? You know what? Most of us cannot say yes to all three of these important questions. But you must. It is the first step of the journey. Defining what you want. Defining the path to get there. And defining a timeline of all the different things you're going to be doing to get there. If you haven't done this for your ideal studio, then how can you ever expect to get your ideal studio? You know what? You're a creative. You have a fantastic mind. Even though sometimes you might doubt that. You do. So let's use that fantastically creative tool and let's design the studio of your dreams. So what do you want? And what experience do you want for your clients? Through the filter of your business's goals, your statements, your mission, value, and vision statements, what things will get you excited? What things will make you proud? What, if you had it, would cause an endless supply of excitement and enthusiasm about your future? Before you begin... You must know very clearly who your target market is so that your message is clear to all, not just your target market, clear to all. And so that your ideal client is the one who responds with enthusiasm. Because at every step of the process of building your ideal studio, 
you want to incorporate this. You want them to have shareable moments. We'll talk about that in a second. I want you to define your business processes. You may have already done this. I want you to define the ideal client experience. This includes both the client experience and your behind the scenes processes. The prospect to client process. Marketing, client funnel, how does that go? What are you trying to convey? How about the client sales process? Once they become a client. Now that actually starts just slightly before because they give you a phone call and you're expecting to do business with them because you've done a good job of target marketing and the majority of your calls are now people who are your target market. By the way, if you're getting a lot of calls for people who are price shopping, it just simply means that your marketing has room for improvement. Once they become a client, what's your process? How about the planning session? I mentioned earlier, I already know what size the print is going to be during the planning session. Why would I wait to determine that after I've created the photographs? I mean, it would be like building a building and then deciding later you want to put a pool in it. What? No, you design it ahead of time. It makes no sense to design it later. It's harder later. Much harder. I'm selling prints before I have a print to sell. It's a whole lot easier to sell something that doesn't yet exist to be able to sell. Because then you're selling it in their mind, which is the only place where they buy anyway. My sales occur long before I've had an opportunity to make a sale. Now, I do make the sale later on and during the, the portrait selection consultation. That's when I actually make it happen. But I, they are already sold during the planning session. How about the photography session? What's ideal? What do you want? What do you want them to experience? What about your post-production? That's all behind the scenes. What do you do? Is there something about that that could enhance the relationship with your client? Yeah. How about the portrait selection consultation where you're showing your photographs? That's done in a lot of different ways. I do it in person at their home with a projector on the wall in the space it's going to be displayed in, in the size that I feel is most appropriate. It's not the only way. I think it's a great way to get a visualization, but it's not even the only way to do that. That can be done through software. You can take a photograph of their wall. They could even photograph their own wall. You could do it via Zoom. There's a lot of ways to do it. There's one best way for you. You have to define what that is. You might not know. I get it. Maybe you want to try several different things. I totally understand. But there are ways to narrow it down. And that's by defining what you want. And what you feel your clients are going to get the most excited about. Because at every step of this process, I want you to make it a wow experience. Again, we're going to talk a little bit more about that. So at every point in the client process, once they become a client, the planning session, the photography session, the post-production, the portrait selection consultation, and finally, product finishing. By the way, product finishing, again, just like beauty is in the eye of the beholder, so is what is correct in the, port in the product finishing stage. For me, it's absolutely printing. But it doesn't end there. That's just one of the many steps in the process, an important one. My process ends once that photograph is displayed on their wall. Framed if appropriate. 
displayed on their wall. Proudly displayed on their wall. So that every time they walk past it, they have an opportunity to cry tears of joy. But it doesn't even end there. Because there's a little bit of marketing that goes on at that point. I photograph the work on their wall. Because I want to show it to other people. I want others to know that this is the norm. This is what I do. Mm, doesn't end there. I photograph the happy thrill the clients in front of their photograph on their wall. And again, it doesn't end there. Video testimonial of them talking about how excited they are to have this portrait on the wall. Yeah. People ask, how do you get people to want a wall portrait? Everybody I work with wants a wall portrait. It's because that's how I market myself. That's what I just, I tell them that's what I do. It's not like you go to the tool store and you're after something that a screwdriver can do and you go home with a hammer. No, because you know the difference. If your client and people who are calling you don't know the difference, it just means you have room for improvement in your marketing. That's all it means. At every step of your client sales process, at every step of your prospect to client process, add in wow moments and shareable experiences. What things big, what things small can you add in to give your potential client Get, to get them to feel enthusiastic about sharing their experience with their friends. Ask yourself, what could I do to make that happen? Because at every single step of the process, there is something you can do. By the way, if you feel stuck on that, reach out to me. I can help. It's what I do. I help photographers. I don't expect you to know everything. I don't know everything. I didn't know everything when I was starting. I don't know everything now, 30 years after I started. By the way, I started in October of 19, uh, when was it? May of hmm, June. June of 1991 is when I became a full-time professional photographer. That was my income. Has been for 30 plus years. I know a little something, but I still don't know everything. But I can help. <laughs> I can absolutely help. What Things can you add in to give your client a feeling of enthusiasm, a feeling of this is fantastic, something that is shareable with their friends, something that they just can't wait to share. They're saying, wow, often during your process, because you designed it that way. All the little things that you do are going to add up to an ideal client becoming a loyal one and encouraging others to work with you too. If you've heard me before, you have likely heard me say, don't seek the seekers. The seekers... The price shoppers, they are uh, the ones who are getting a lot of photographers' attention. And they wind up being confused. And so the only thing they can really make a decision on is good enough and majority price. If you're competing based on price, you're going to lose. There's always someone who can do it less. So we don't compete there. We compete based on what it is we can provide to our clients. My clients don't price shop. Yours won't either if you got your marketing right. Once you have your process clear and packed with shareable experiences, then... It's time to start brainstorming your ideal studio. So let's do that. But how? All right. 
define what you want. I've said that before. Define what you want, both for you and your clients. During this brainstorming session that you are about to do, to enter into, do not critique. Do not think that something's not possible because at the brainstorming stage, everything is. If it's possible for anyone, it's possible during this brainstorming session. Do not think that something's not possible. Do not think, hmm, you know, I don't think I'll ever be able to afford that. Do not attempt to fine tune, to organize. This is the time to let that impressively creative mind of yours to be able to shine like it can and has. Allow it. Allowing negative to creep in slows, if not stops, your beautiful, wonderful, creative mind. Does it feel like a pie-in-the-sky idea? Great. Let your mind do its thing. Get in touch with the feelings and emotions that you want your clients to have. And allow this to be your guide as you allow your mind to wander. At each step of your process, what can your studio do to make the experience amazing? What things could you include that you're proud of, that you're excited by, that you feel everyone, and when I say everyone, I mean in your target market, will think, Wow, that's so cool. What will make you feel like bragging? Nah, I know. Stop. I'm not saying you're going to. You're not going to brag. I kind of you are. But that's not the point. I just want you to have the, thing, the things that make you feel like bragging. Don't let negative creep in during this brainstorm. Now I'm going to walk through it with you. Hopefully you're taking notes. Sorry if I'm going too fast. By the way, if I am, or if you just need something more, it's what I do. Just reach out to me, Jim at LandersPhotoSchool.com. Jim at LandersPhotoSchool.com. I can help you with this. If you just want a free 30-minute session, I do that. If you want to have lunch with me, I'm buying every single Tuesday. Every Tuesday. I buy lunch for one photographer. I like spending time with photographers. Let's do that brainstorm. Where is your ideal studio? Where is it? Again, take the I can't out of this. The I don't have, the it's impossibles. No, no, no. Stop limiting your wonderful, beautiful brain. Let this flow. Allow it. Where is the studio? Is it downtown? Beautiful loft space? Maybe with a group of other creatives. Ooh, maybe you want a warehouse, maybe a big one. Maybe you want to own your own property. Maybe it's just outside of town. <laughs> Catch if you're thinking, well, I don't have any property outside of town, or it's too expensive. Then maybe you're misunderstanding the purpose of this assignment and its value to your goals. This is not meant in any way to be practical, not yet. It is too soon for that. This is the time for allowing your mind some free will without critique. Open that mind to do what it can do without your logical side. Not yet. We're going to get to it. 
What will your clients see? How about as soon as they get off the road in your parking lot, on your property, what will they see? Will there be a sign? What's the sign going to look like? Will there be a driveway lined with trees? Maybe it's landscape so they can use it for outdoor photography. What's the parking lot going to look like? Where are they going to park? How is it going to be obvious? You don't want them wondering where they're supposed to park. Where are they parking? What's it look like? Will they be able to unload themselves and their stuff under an awning so they don't get wet when it's raining? Or they're not melting in the heat of the summer sun? You may think, well, I mean, they, even if they did unload their stuff under an awning, they still have to move the car to a parking spot. Okay. How about a valet service? Don't limit your mind, guys. Why not have it a valet service for your business? This is a luxury after all. What's your entrance going to look like? The door? The handle? What's it look like once they've made it inside? What do you want them to see? What do you want them to hear? What do you want them to smell? How do you want them to feel? That moment they enter, what do you want for that experience? Imagine the coolest place you've ever seen. What about it can you incorporate into your client's initial experience? Is there a high ceiling? A chandelier? Are there big windows? Is there comfortable seating? TV? Magazines on a coffee table? <laughs> Your art appropriately sized on the walls and lit correctly? What about the doorway that leads to the camera room? The dressing room? The restroom? The hair and makeup room? Describe what that coffee bar with the barista is going to look like. What's on the windows? Are there any signs on the wall? What are you going to say when they first enter? What are the first words that are said to them? And who is it that's going to say them? Your receptionist? Your valet? Will your clients be treated like royalty? Or maybe a best friend? Will they wait in a waiting room? Will they be escorted to another room? Will there be, will there be a massage chair to sit in? <laughs> will a beverage or snacks be offered? Well, so what? What will you be offering? When it's time for them to enter the camera room, what will they see, hear, and smell there? What about it will make them feel like this is going to be one of the most fantastic experiences that they have ever experienced? Where will they put their stuff?
How's the session going to go? You can have a mirror close by so they can check out themselves, fix things up just a little bit. Will you have a monitor for them to see their images as you're creating them? Where's your camera before the session, during the session? Where does it go after? What about your lights, backdrops, props? Does everything just sit out? Or does it have a home? There aren't any wrong answers here. This is just your vision. What about when the photography session is over? What happens next? Do they get to see the images and choose right away? Are you going to go through the images, call them, do some artwork while they take in a massage by the company masseuse? How does your selection process go? Will they be looking into a, into a monitor or a projection in your sales room? Will you be going to their home to project the images on the wall and the size and the space that will be that the finished images will be printed in? It's up to you. Once it's over, what happens? If they're in your studio, will you be escorting them out yourself? You know, as you wait for the valet to bring up the car, Maybe you could do a selfie with them and post it to social media. You know, hopefully I've given you a lot of ideas on what's possible at your studio. My goal is not to tell you what to do. I, I can't. That's not something I have the ability to do. All I can do is share with you some of the thoughts that I have. And hopefully you can use those to help focus your vision to get what it is that you want for you and your clients. Now, once you've done that brainstorming, let's move into research and further inspiration. There's multiple ways to do this. There's two ways that I usually do it. So I'm going to share those with you. One, a Google search. Using your keywords, how do you define what it is that you're doing? Now, if you are in one of my classes and you're taking a private class, we have more time together, I'm actually going to tell you to take this quite a few steps further um, and narrow down what it is that you want to just a handful of things, maybe three things. Five, maybe, but I really want you to focus on some really key pieces of this project. And I'm going to ask you to do research on just those. But no matter what, you have some keywords about what it is that you want. Use that to find things and uh, th that match and then collect those things in a place that works well for you. That could be just file folders on your, on your hard drive. It could be bookmarking. But, man, I have bookmarks, and I have organized bookmarks, and I don't go to them as often as I should. It's a good tool. I just don't use it as much. Instead, I generally, when I'm doing this kind of brainstorming, I'm doing the second thing I'm going to share with you, and that's Pinterest. Pinterest.com. Again, you're entering in keywords. And you're doing this for every step of your process. So if I'm talking about the, the area outside that they're going to drive up to, I, I, may do, uh, I may do a Pinterest board on signs. If I want a sign, I might not. But if I want one, I'm going to do a Pinterest board on cool signs. Parking lots, landscaping, what the front looks like, the door, the handle. I'm going to do a Pinterest board on all these different things. 
No, if you don't know how to do a Pinterest board, you just start searching. You don't start with the board. You just start searching, and you find the things you want, and you save them. You pin them, and then once you have done that, you tell it. Well, you, you're clicking on what it is you want them to do. Let me let me just show you real quick what that means. Share my screen. Chrome tab, Pinterest. I'm assuming you guys have done this before, but I don't know. So therefore, I'm sharing my screen with you. Now I've already entered in something, Warehouse Photo Studio. <laughs> you may look at that and think, oh, I don't want that. Enter in what it is you do want. Let's say that I find something in here that I think is pretty darn cool. And, you know, it could be anything. So I'm just scrolling through, looking at different things. Uh, you know, they've got the cyclorama there. It looks kind of cool. Uh, you've got steps going up to another area. That looks cool. Brick background, the windows. There's, there's a bunch of things in here that catch my attention and maybe yours too. So I'm just scrolling, scrolling. And I find something I like, maybe that sign on the rock wall. Maybe I want to have a sign like that in my studio. So I'm going to collect it by clicking here and telling it. Now, I may have to create a board if I don't have one already. But I, I'm going to put that under metal wall art. These are ones that, uh, that they're suggesting. You can see how it says suggestions there. But I might put it under Landish Photography School, Photography Niche, or Niche. But I'm going to save that so that I can come back to it later. That's how I like to do this kind of thing, is with Pinterest. Now, You're collecting your thoughts, your ideas, the images that you find interesting, intriguing. You may have lots, or you're going to have lots of different boards. You may have, uh, let's say, outside the studio, um, the lobby area, the camera room, the restaurant, the uh, the um, the coffee shop, the the masseuse area, the hair and makeup area, the, the sensory deprivation room. Uh, yeah. It, it's your vision. At this point, put everything you can think of that you think would be cool for you and your clients. Put it in there. You'll be fine-tuning this later. But you're going to do it with some thoughts and ideas that are very much directed to you and what you want for you and your clients. You'll have several boards filled with ideas and examples of things you like. Now, once you've done all that, I want you to take a break. Take a break. This is the time to just simply take a break. I want you to stop thinking about it for a while. Allow your mind to now just relax. Maybe that means for you going for a walk, playing with a dog. Maybe going to a local coffee shop and just sitting, vegging. Don't make any phone calls during this time. Don't check your email. Don't check your social media. Mm -mm. Just be. You're taking a break. Just enjoy the moment. When you do this, your mind actually is still working on it. It is. It's putting things together. It's filling in gaps. You're going to have, during this break time, you're going to have inspirations. You're going to have epiphanies. 
be prepared to take notes, write them down, or record them on your phone. Maybe just talk to your phone's voice recorder. Again, don't critique. Not the right time for that. Just record when that inspiration hits. It may come quickly. And then again, it may take a while. I mean, maybe you even go to bed and sometime during the night you wake up with your inspiration. Maybe it's not until the next morning while you're showering. Whenever it hits, be ready to record those thoughts. Now, the last part of this, organize and plan. It is now time to put the logical and practical side of your mind to work for you. Using the resources that your beautiful, wonderful, creative mind has prepared. Go through your lists, your images, and put them in an order that makes sense. Make a detailed description of your studio and its many parts. I want you to draw out a floor plan, a wall plan. There's software to help you with that, or just pull out a piece of paper. And then build the plan to make it all happen. You can do this. This is going to be fun. I see that there's a handful of, of comments and I haven't looked at them yet, so maybe I should. Yeah, I get that, Suri. I'm glad you're here, by the way. Uh, yeah. If you have a full-time job that you're doing well at that you enjoy, I can understand why someone would want to continue doing that. There's a lot of good reasons to continue. Photography is always going to keep on calling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rick. Uh. <laughs> All right. So your studio would be very expensive. I bet everyone's vision would be. Yeah. And we'll narrow that down. By the way, I can help with that. Doing studio design is something I love doing. Um, but, uh, yeah, it is going to be expensive in the vision stage, and it's going to be expensive in the practical stage as well. But, oh, wow, those two students that I visited with last week that, that uh, both said they felt behind. I have both of them ideas on how they could afford it. We actually went through the, a, a little process. It was much shorter than if I was doing a private session with them or an extended one. Um, and we probably will go into that because I gave them an assignment and their next thing is to do that, but we didn't do that yet. Um, but uh, there are ways to help you afford the things you feel like you cannot afford. And I know that some of you are doing some of those things. I'm not going to share them here because of time and because I didn't get permission to share those things. And, but there's some of you watching today that, that are doing that. You have a studio, but you've got something else going on that helps you pay for it all. And let's see. Um, let me switch that banner back. There we go. What are the other comments? Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, that's true. Uh, 
there are good reasons to um, to make changes because of the, the things that have gone on in the past couple of years. Uh, uh, the, the, bot the baseline stays the same, how you treat your clients stays the same, uh, but there are some process changes that, that um, could be beneficial and could be permanent. And this may be what you're, you're talking about here. Yeah, good. Hmm, Lexus dealership. Yep. Yeah. Uh, by the way, during one of my classes, one of the assignments is to go to places that you feel are in the luxury category and just look around. Check out the environment. Is it clear where you're supposed to park when you first get there? Is there, is there signage that helps you find where you're supposed to go? Is it obvious? And if so, what is it that caused it to be so? How do you feel when you go in? Are, is someone talking to you? What's, what's their first? I recommend in this class, that's the E3 class, by the way. It starts in May. Um, but uh, the e, E3 is a class that, that I've been doing for several years. It's called Elite 3, and it's um, I just shorten it to E3. Elite 3 just is what I called the first three people that took the class. I called them my Elite 3. Uh, and they are all fantastic, wonderful people. Uh, I guess I'll say their first names, Sarah, Silver, and Angela. Uh, I don't know if, I don't think they mind me sharing their names at all, but they are all just wonderful people. But they're, to me, the Elite Three. Uh, and everyone who came after them uh, gets the benefit of, of the creation or the, uh, the growth of that class, because that was the first one. They were the guinea pigs. Uh, no, but E3 is definitely something that helps a photographer form a practical long-term business, assuming they apply what they learn, of course. Uh, when it comes to the, the studio, uh, Lewis, yeah, I'm glad that you commented on that. Sounds like an experience. Uh, okay, yep. And I'm gonna, uh, I, w I would love to do same-day viewing, ordering while they go out to lunch, your treat, nearby restaurant. Yeah. And form a partnership with that restaurant. It's one of the things that helps you pay for different things. Form a partnership. And, oh, thanks, Chuck. Appreciate that. And Chuck is the, um, for the last several years, many, many years, has been in charge of the judges for the annual San Antonio Photography Tournament. But as that, the, the, he is in charge of judges' hospitality and all of the things related to the judge. Um, getting them, communicating with them, it, it's it, just a lot of things along those lines. Um, but again, he's been doing this for the annual San Antonio Photography Tournament. But what it means is he can't participate and he wants to participate. So this year, for the first time ever, someone else is going to do that that role, and he's going to get to participate. Um, so I, I don't know if you wanted me to share that, Chuck, but I, I'm I'm happy for you. I want you to be able to participate. We just need to find a volunteer to to help out with that. Now, do you guys know about the annual San Antonio Photography Tournament? It happens in October of every single year. Uh, Digital Pro Lab is one of the major sponsors. There are a lot of sponsors because there's a lot of prizes and uh, it's a it's a one day instant gratification event where we give you the the um uh, the categories 15 categories and uh, you go and you photograph them that day it's going to be virtual so wherever you're at wherever in the world you're at you photograph and submit your entries based on those topics those categories they're judged immediately, and then we announce the winners immediately, and we tell you what the prizes are and send those out. So that all happens on that one day in October. Ah, good. Uh, a Disney-like experience. Uh, that's a good one. I definitely like that one. <laughs> yep, Chuck, I'm glad... Because hopefully you'll be training the, the new person on what to do. <laughs> uh, um, oh, man. So these things that I've shared with you today are just to get your mind moving in the direction of what would be cool. 
what would be freaking amazing. Now, the how, the pieces and parts to that, it's not part of today's session. We could make another session on that. Maybe we will. But if you're going to take my classes, it is it is part of that, how to make it happen. That's an advanced class, but how to make it happen. Ah, Fabian, I appreciate you saying that. Uh, Fabian is um, uh, the owner of International Visual Communications. Uh, so if you guys want to, to have a, uh, a video business card created, video business cards are really cool. He does those. He can do that for you. So, you know, reach out to him. He's right there in, in the, uh, I don't know which of the uh, uh, pages he's on, but on one of the pages he's there, you can just click on his name and reach out to him. Uh, but uh, very, very cool. Fabian is, in fact, one of our one of our teachers. He helps me teach the video side uh, of, of photography. By the way, when I say video side, it's on the marketing side. Uh, I'm not recommend that you guys become videographers. <laughs> If that's what you want, fine. But that's not what I'm recommending. I do recommend video in your marketing, though. And Fabian is the guy to go to. Uh, so you guys hopefully have some thoughts and ideas. And hopefully you're taking this to the next level and you're actually doing it. And I want you to tell me. I want you to include me. I'm excited about this stuff. So share this kind of these kind of things with me. And I bet... Amanda is excited about these kind of things too. So let me bring her back on. Hey, Amanda. Hello again. So I know that you've got some, uh, well, you may have comments about what we just talked about and I know you have some things you want to share. No, I mean, I love the, the degree of detail in which you went into planning for your, your dream. I mean, building a business in and of itself is, is a dream, but then you start breaking apart the dream and, and this particular area of having a studio and, and seeing that come to fruition, I, I think is, is a, a beautiful dream. It's, it's a beautiful goal. It's, it's an achievement that, you know, I, I hope many of you will, will be able to achieve um, with the help of Jim, obviously. <laughs> so thanks Jim for sharing that. That was very helpful. Of course. Thanks, Amanda. I appreciate that. Yeah. All right, so we do have several announcements, um, but the first thing, because I know everybody's kind of waiting for it, is the promo code for this week. Um, so what I want to spotlight this week is going to be wood prints. So I know you see a lot of the prints behind me. These are going to be our, our fine art prints, but uh, many of you don't know that we do other types of substrates like metal, wood, slate, things like that that are a little bit different um, from your traditional photographic printing or fine art printing. So let me go ahead and show you really quick one of the wood prints. And I brought a small one so it fits on screen. So as you can see, it's actually on wood. This is a maple wood. And what we do is we print the image to the actual material. And what you're seeing shine through is the actual striation of the wood. Um, so images like this, if, if it was just the, the digital image we were looking at on screen, most of this background area would be very light, a little blown out as we would call it, but it's perfect for pieces like this because you want those nice white areas to shine, uh, to see through to those textures of the wood. Um, so you get those interesting striations. So it kind of gives something extra to the image. Um, if you look at the back of it, it comes ready to hang. So depending on, you know, obviously this is a square, so it's not, not too complicated there. But um, as you get into some of the bigger sizes and get into some of the different aspect ratios, like 16 by 20, things like that, um, that those different uh, hanging apparatuses come in handy too. But it's thick. Um, it, it's a little heavy. Um, so we would want to make sure that those are braced well on the wall if you're going to be installing them yourself. Uh, but otherwise, it's very fun, very creative. Um, but I encourage you to, to think outside the box with some of these wood prints, especially the smaller ones in terms of, you know, studios. If you have your own studios, or if you're looking for something kind of extra to show your, your client, you can always use that, an 8x10, and create a menu. So what you're handing them um, is something a little bit more substantial. Um, it doesn't always have to have an image to it. You know, get outside of what you think some of these products have to be in terms of our industry, because in business, you can do things more creatively um, and create marketing products or marketing pieces like a menu. Um, that you can use again and again without it being a 
sometimes your piece of paper you have to continue to reprint. Um, so consider that also just as kind of an outside the box idea for a wood print. Um, so this week the wood prints are, let me go ahead and pop it up on the screen, are going to be 20% off. And I should have said off, but I'll go ahead and update that in a sec. So 20% off wood prints with code wood prints when you order through digitalprolab.com. So you can either come into the store here in San Antonio, or if you want to just order online, feel free to do that. We have several different ordering systems, uh, both our full service desktop ordering system, our monitor match desktop ordering system. And then we have our Rose Web, uh, which is a full service ordering system that doesn't require a download. Any of our ordering systems, you should be able to use that promo code. Uh, to receive 20% off any of our wood print products. And we have everything from, you know, the little 10 by 10 that you just saw all the way up to 20 by 30, 24 by 36. Um, so there's some pretty large sizes there too, if you want to do some larger wall prints. I know we were talking about size earlier, um, but yeah, so, so we do have a good selection of sizes for you to choose from. And I hope you'll try something different if you've never tried a, a wood print before, because it's kind of interesting. Uh, it's different and it will set you apart from some of the other photographers, typically. All right. So that's a first announcement. The next one is upcoming. So Espresso and Edits is an event that we are doing in partnership with the Camera Exchange, as well as the Photo Center, which is a new uh, photography uh, inspired space. It's all things photography. If you've ever imagined, hey, I want to go to a place where I can just sit, have conversations with other photographers, talk about, you know, camera issues or photography styles or how to create, you know, my new studio, that space that I want to have. Um, this is a space to do that, the Photo Center, which is located at 724 South Alamo Street, Suite 2 here in San Antonio, Texas. It's in the South Town part of San Antonio, what we call South Town or our Arts District. Um, and that's a new wonderful space where photographers will be able to come together to talk photography. Um, and Digital Pro Lab, we are a big supporter and sponsor of the Photography Center. Um, and one of our Espresso and Edits, the one coming up this Saturday at 2 p.m., is going to be hosted there at the Photo Center. Um, and again, Espresso and Edits is an event that we put on every single month. Um, and, and it is what it is. Uh, it's espresso. So we definitely are going to have coffee there for you to, to enjoy. And that will be sponsored this time by the Photo Center. And it's all about editing. So bring your laptop, sit down, edit your images. So if you have images to cull or edit or want to be inspired by the way other individual photographers are editing their images, this is a time to do it because we're going to be sitting in this wonderful creative space with other photographers, even videographers. Um, and just kind of talk shop and see see what they're doing and they'll see what you're doing. Um, and we get ideas and inspired um, from each other. Uh, and I've, I've also been inspired by a lot of them. I don't know if y'all follow my social media pages, but a lot of my inspiration comes from the beautiful, wonderful, creative people here in San Antonio and, and throughout the uh, Hill Country area that come in. So that's another announcement. So I hope you can make that one this Saturday. And then the last one I have is our print competition. So unfortunately, at the very last minute, given the weather and increase in, in COVID cases, we decided to postpone our print competition. So we've updated that date to be February 17th. That's also on a Thursday, just like it initially was. So we're just going to do it February as opposed to this January. So if you were interested and you didn't get a chance to submit your prints um, or even uh, maybe really wanted to do it, but that date didn't work out, um, this is another date. You've got plenty of time now, uh, well over, you know, 20 days or so to go ahead and get your images, prepare them and actually put them into a print competition for a critique. Um, and these images will actually go against other images. So they are paired next to each other and, and they are scored and graded. And then by the end of it, you'll know whether or not you got a first, second, third or honorable mention. Um, in addition to that, every single print is individually live critiqued, which is a very, very rewarding experience. It's enlightening. And you'll also see how, how they critique other people's in, individual images as well. So if you've never done a print competition, I highly encourage it. Um, the judges that are doing it um, are very, very wonderful, very supportive. Um, no negative critiques, I promise. So so don't come in thinking we're just going to butcher you, but, 
but it's it's a really great experience and i hope that you'll all participate if you haven't especially if you're new to printing printing is important and part of the printing process is putting your work up because it's no longer housed on your computer where nobody can see it it's up on the wall or it's up being displayed somewhere um, and you need the confidence that's needed um, to be a printer by presenting your work. And you only get that confidence by presenting it. So I, again, I encourage everybody to participate if you can. So that's, that's my announcement for today. Um, so thanks again, Jim, as always, for uplifting the photography community with us and sharing your insights. And we love you. <laughs> Aw, <laughs> well. We love Amanda at Digital Pro Lab and your team uh, because you help make us look great. <laughs> um, so so th those three things, again, that the, the wood prints, um, you know, that's probably one of the ones that the fewest number of people have tried, I'm guessing. Um, and so this you definitely take advantage of that just to, to see what it looks like. Um, and the, the print that you gave as an example is is a good one. Some of them look good on that on that surface and some of them not quite as good. So play with it a little bit, especially when you have this special deal going on. Uh, uh, on our software, there's actually a button that you can click and it'll kind of emulate the look of it. It's never ooh, exactly nice. that wood is, is a little bit different when you try each but you'll at least see if it's gonna if it's gonna be a good trial for you. Nice. That's smart. I'm glad you have that. And then something for us to do in person, espresso and edits. So Saturday, uh, July 29th at 2 p.m. And I would love to go to that, but it's my son's birthday. So I might not be there. I'll be there in spirit, but I definitely encourage you guys who are watching, do these kind of things. Uh, this and all the other things that you see coming up, putting yourself out there, being around those who have uh, similar goals, similar problems. This is a benefit to you trying to do everything on your own, man, there we're do it yourselfers. Photographers are do it yourselfers. And this is sometimes a good thing, but there are, there's more mistakes available than you have time to even recognize, much less conquer. So be in the presence of others. Use those resources that are readily available. They're everywhere. There's always something going on. Take advantage of it. So Espresso and Edits, that's on Saturday. And uh, the, the competition, mm, uh, some people are thinking, yay, great. It didn't happen this past month. It's going to happen next month. I wasn't ready anyway. This is fantastic, especially that you guys are, are doing it there in person at your place and uh, that's a, a place that um i think everybody knows where digital pro lab is and if you don't well it's really easy to find uh and so we'll just see you guys at 7 p.m on february 17th for that competition um and uh, do you encourage those who are have never participated before to show up and just see what it's all about yeah, absolutely. Um, I know that the last several times we've had it, we've had individuals come just to see what it was all about, and then they typically will be in the next one. So, yeah. so that's always nice to see as well. Yeah, I believe that. Cool. Well, thank you for, for bringing things like that. I mean, you are wonderful at what you do. The printing, the the uh, uh, all the different things that you're doing, but then you branch out and and do a whole bunch of other things that are helping us as photographers out, so that we look better. I mean, it's talking about you know when you when you guys work with a vendor, when you're working with someone who uh, is going to help enhance what it is that you do, your goal is to find someone who does the job that you want them to do very well. And there may be a lot of those out there. Not all of them fit that description, but there may be a lot of options out there, but there aren't a whole lot that are doing the kind of outreach and the kind of help and assistance that Amanda and her team at Digital Pro Lab are doing. And this is fantastic that you guys are here in this area so that we can take advantage of working with you. Thank you, Amanda, for all you do for us photographers. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, did you have anything else that you wanted to share or is it time to bring this episode of the portrait profit show to a close i think it's ready to close and we'll see you next week thanks amanda 
All right. So again, I hope that you have gotten something out of this lesson today about getting the studio of your dreams and, and how to do that, how to begin that by allowing that wonderful creative mind that you have. Your mind is strong. I know you doubt it sometimes because I do too. But you are a creative. You just allow sometimes the negative stuff to creep in. Don't do that. Not at first. Brainstorm it. Let those ideas flow. Let the crazy things happen. Write them down. Record them. Research them. And then maybe reach out to me with those crazy thoughts and ideas because I might be able to help you find ways to get them even when you can't afford it. There are ways. And I've done several of them many times. And I'm happy to share them with you. Just reach out to me. The easiest way is probably my email address, jim at landersphotoschool.com. Jim at landersphotoschool.com. I want you to get that studio of your dreams. And I want you to get it sooner rather than later because later just doesn't happen. For Landers Photography School and Digital Pro Lab, this is Jim Landers bringing you the weekly Portrait Profits Show giving you evolving content, awareness, and even fun to the business side of photography. We provide helpful information, step-by-step -step processes, how-to articles, and action steps that will help you in, with the struggles you deal with now so that you are constantly and consistently realigned to the path that leads to the success you deserve. Thank you guys for being here. Bye-bye for now.